Hey everybody, this is Terry Rice at Ad Foundry, and for today's workflow, we're going to take a look at the depth generator in NukeX to create a depth pass that can be used for grading, masking, softening. In our example here, we're going to add atmosphere to our plate and to our trusty sphere that's all been generated in Nuke. So let's get into it. All right, we're going to take a look at how the node works. We're going to need a camera that has been tracked to our plate. I have one prepared here. We're also going to need a source, which is our plate. So the node has already actually generated depth from our plate. So let's hop over to the depth channel and adjust the gamma and gain so we can see it a bit better. Now let's explore the node. If we have a mask that's occluding objects, we can choose how we want to deal with it. Like let's say we had a moving object. It would be tough for the node to generate the depth. So we would mask it. So we only have static objects in our plate. And this is where the depth would be created from. Now for this plate, we don't have uh, any moving objects, so we're not going to need to change this. We'll keep this to none. For our depth output, we can choose to generate depth or distance. Now depth is going to be the distance along the camera's z-axis, and the distance will be the output along the ray of the camera center to a 3D surface point. We want to generate depth, not distance. The surface point will let us create a position pass from our footage and the surface normal allows us to create a normal pass. Although we don't need this for our shot, we're gonna take a look at how to create them a little later on. Now frame separation is what this node is all about and this is what's gonna define our depth. We can use this to select the offset between the current frame on either side to calculate our depth. So for example, if our frame separation is set to two and we're at frame 100, the node is gonna look at frame 98 and frame 102 to create the depth from. What it's doing is matching pixels between the frames to create 3D points, and then that's where the depth is generated from. Having a higher frame separation gives a larger baseline for the camera, and it gives a more accurate depth result, but there's a trade-off. It can reduce the quality of the pixel matching and give us incorrect 3D points. So a general guideline would be for fast moving cameras, have a smaller frame separation, and for slower cameras, use a larger separation. For a shot that has a variation in speed, you'd wanna be keyframing the separation. Now we can also have the depth generator analyze the sequence and attempt to come up with the best frame separation. So let's go ahead and do that. So something to note as this is working it out, we have to make sure that our camera is tracked for all the frames in our sequence, not just a partial thing, otherwise it's not gonna work out. Okay, now that it's done, we have the calculated accuracy. So let's scrub through and you can see that the accuracy is changing throughout our shot. Now, what we want here is to get to as close as one as possible, and that will be considered accurate. The frame separation in this case is ranging from around 15 to 19, and we're gonna need more control for this as our accuracy is fluctuating quite a lot. So our other option is to analyze a frame. Now, this is where you're likely gonna find the most success. We can go to a frame and analyze it. So it's gonna work through the timeline and give us a frame separation and a result in the calculated accuracy. So from here, it's very important. I wanna do a visual inspection of the shot and add any keyframes where I think they're needed. So I can either do this by analyzing a frame or by manually entering a frame separation value. It's a little easier in this case to add a frame separation value manually because the guesswork is taken out. I know the general value that things should be in. So I'm gonna go and do this for a couple of frames here. Now, looking at the pass is only gonna help me so much. I wanna QC this against a plate. So what I'm gonna do is uh, shuffle out the depth. I'm going to then invert it. I'll add a grade node and use this on the mask to grade the plate. Uh, let's choose a color for the plate and then now we can adjust the grade of the depth. And I wanna move throughout the shot and make sure I'm happy with the frame separation. And we can always make adjustments as we go along if we find things are, are messing up, but this is very important. We wanna make sure that we're spending time tweaking the frame separation to something that we're comfortable with and we have a, a pretty great result with before we get too deep into things. So back to the depth generator, let's take a look at some of the attributes. Under the depth generation section, we have depth detail. The default value is 0.5. So this is using half the resolution of the plate to create detail. A low value will speed up the process and deliver a smoother result. 
and a higher value will use a larger resolution to create the detail and it's also going to pick up some very fine detail but the process is going to be quite heavy the normal detail is specific for the normal map which we didn't generate so let's move on to the next one and if you think the depth is noisy in flat areas of the image we can increase the noise value this will tell the node to ignore noise in our footage when creating the depth. The higher value, the smoother the map, but you can see that things will get blended and we're going to lose detail. If we set it low, it'll concentrate on details and not worry if the map comes out noisy or not. So let's make sure we use this gently. You could also denoise your footage before using the depth generator to help with this. Strength defines how strong the pixel matching will be between frames. Default value is normally okay, but if some edges aren't fitting, like let's say in this trolley area, we can increase the strength to force match the details. Sharpness will help with object boundaries. We can go high to show clearer separation between objects. Smoothness will give a variable softness to the result. It's good to take a look at the edges here and use a balance of the sharpness and the smoothness. Now, this can be important or not so important in some cases. It depends what you're doing with the plate. The depth limit will clip the minimum and maximum values allowed inside of the depth map. So everything outside this range will be clipped and will be gone. You can also mark bad regions to show areas that are unclear or inexact from the calculation. And you can have a visual representation in the viewer. This plate is actually pretty good. Now that we've calculated the depth, we can see how we applied it in the script. So for our shot, we've added a 3D object as well as some atmosphere. So we want to know where to place this sphere in 3D space that's going to work with our depth pass. So we can do this by creating a displace card from the depth generator. You want to do this on a frame where the calculated accuracy is high. Uh, so this area looks good. And we're going to create a card. So now we have a reference for where to place our 3D objects. Now I've used the displaced card for reference in order to place my sphere and built up the base color, the logo, then using a reflection shader and an HDRI along with the ray render. So we have some reflections and then an ambient occlusion shader and the ray render. So it gets all contact shadows. Once I have the result, I can combine the depth from the sphere and add it to the result from the depth generator. And I can use this to mask and grade. So as far as the fog goes, I have a larger sphere that has noise mapped to it. It's been placed in position thanks to the displaced card from the generator. The depth has been shuffled out from the sphere and combined with the output from the depth generator. And we're going to use this to grade uh, the output and be used as a mask as well. So we're masking the noise here. So an additional grade node with some color that's also being used in the depth as a mask. So now we have a result. Okay, now last thing we're going to look at is creating a position and normal pass for our footage we can use for relighting and for texturing or retexturing. So first let's take a look at creating the surface point or position. What we want to do is create a new channel. Let's name it position. And for the channels we want to create, we don't want RGB information. We want 3D, so we want to do X, Y, Z and hit OK. So now like that, we can go ahead and check our position. And now we have a position channel. So same thing for the surface normal. Let's just switch this back. We can go and create a new channel. Let's call this normal. And we also want X, Y, and Z information. Let's go ahead and inspect the channel. And now that we've enabled the normal channel, the normal detail will now give us feedback when we begin to use it. So that about wraps it up for this workflow. I hope you enjoyed learning about the depth generator and how you can be using it on your plates.